Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video and in this video I want to talk to you a little bit about the anxious preoccupied attachment style and jealousy. This has been a request I've been getting non-stop and so I figured I'd sort of do a bit of a deep dive into this content or topic specifically. So I will do a series and I will talk a little bit probably at a high level in this video specifically about like how different attachment styles experience jealousy differently and I'll do a specific video for fearful avoidance, for secure and for dismissive avoidance. Um, but I'm going to give you um, some information about anxious preoccupied individuals specifically and their experience of jealousy and what it looks like and feels like and what's going on. Um, and I'll give you some tools and strategies for how to work through this at the end. So um, before I dive into all of this, we are still doing a sale to support our community during this time. And the um, we're, we probably won't be offering it too much longer depending on like obviously if um, things sort of go back to normal, but we will definitely be here to support you guys if you reach out to our team specifically at info at personaldevelopmentschool.com. But in the meantime, until, you know, sort of hopefully things are, are sort of going back to normal throughout the world, um, and we will basically be supporting that as until that happens. I know that it might be, you know, heading back towards normal and then potentially regressing, or, or I guess we'll sort of see what happens. There's so many variables at play, but um but if you want to join the school as a member um, or just for a single course purchase, you can enter the coupon code with you. It's all one word. And we're still doing 25% off of membership bundles for three months, six months, 12 months. And we are also doing 25% um, uh, off single course purchases. So we'll put a little link that you can click if you want to join below. And um, yeah, hopefully things are, are returning to a more normalized state for a lot of people, or at least are sort of on the... Um, the up and up right now. So let's talk about this topic. Um, why do anxious preoccupied individuals feel jealous and how is their jealousy experienced in a way that could be different um, from the jealousy from other individuals? So first and foremost, the anxious preoccupied has a really unique experience when it comes to the way they attach to others. And this is the fact that because they sue through others and that's so primary for them that it, they have very little soothing skills that they've developed within themselves just because of the way they've con been conditioned and, and they, the nature of their experiences, they equate attachment to safety. So they equate like connection equals I am safe. A threat to my connection or some kind of disconnect means I am unsafe. And this is why like literally it's the anxious preoccupied attachment cell. They experience anxiety because they have a, a fight or flight mechanism that takes place when they feel like there's a threat to their connection. So I want to take that principle. I want to expand that. Imagine you're sitting at a, I don't know, like an event and somebody comes along and they start getting really friendly and super flirtatious with your partner. If you believe there's a threat to your connection, you actually believe there's a threat to your safety. And so jealousy itself is a trauma response for the anxious preoccupied attachment style. When they experience it, it is a trauma response. It's like this knee-jerk reaction of, of trauma coming to the surface. And fearful avoidance have a similar trauma response, but for different reasons. They can have that connection um, threat and safety belief, but usually to a much lesser degree. Um, there can, it's more of like, you know, a disconnect means I'm emotionally unsafe. They don't have this like physical unsafety because a lot of them have had to learn to sue through themselves for physical and safety purposes. And so it's not polarized. It's that, that belief itself isn't as strong. Um, but they equate a potential threat to their relationship as a potential distrust. And then their sort of associations around distrust elicit their own trauma response. And dismissive avoidance, who learn to soothe on their own and, and meet so many of their own needs, they don't feel as much of a threat. And this is why it's a general rule. You see dismissive avoidance um, experience less jealousy, right? Sometimes I've had people say like, why isn't this person getting jealous? Um, and secure individuals tend to have somewhat of a jealousy, re jealousy response to a certain degree, but not anything extreme because they are not deriving their sense of self in an imbalanced way through other people. And they're also not, and I'll tell you what that means more specifically in a second. And they are also not, um, having, you know, this belief association that means if there's some kind of disconnect or a little challenge in the relationship, it means the relationship's going to end. We could be abandoned. We could become unsafe as a result. Disconnect equals unsafety. I can't sue through others. So they, they have a very different relationship to these types of events or experiences. So there's a couple things beyond that. Okay. So we've got that initial belief pattern 
And any other painful stories we have that get ignited through a threat to a relationship are also going to produce a similar sort of traumatic response or really strong fight or flight response. So for example, the other stories, right? Oh, somebody's being flirtatious with my partner. I could be abandoned. I could be alone forever. Um, I might not be good enough, right? So all of these things, and this is why for some anxious preoccupied, not for all, but for some, jealousy can be such a painful thing because all of these painful stories that have a lot of emotional memories attached to them and stored at the subconscious level all sort of flood to the surface, right? And emotion helps to sort of um, make the subconscious content conscious. So you'll experience generally a tremendous amount of emotion around the potential threat to your relationship because it's igniting those core painful stories and because it's also threatening your needs that you have for safety, right? The need for connection, the need for certainty in the relationship, the need for safety and, and security overall. So, so all of these things are sort of happening at the same time. And the last thing that really causes a lot of the jealousy component in the relationship is that um, the mind wants wholeness. The mind wants to equilibrate. It wants wholeness. It wants homeostasis. And and so what the subconscious often does is the traits that it, that it likes in, in other people or that it's attracted to are often traits that represent repressed parts of oneself. So for example, like, you know, you might find that, and you can have a polar opposite reaction. You can also really dislike those traits because you've stored those traits with negative associations attached. So for example, you might see somebody be um, really confident and you might be like, oh, they want too much attention and that's bad. And if you were conditioned to believe that that's bad, then you're going to resent that person or not like that person instead of be like, wow, they're so amazing. But on the flip side, if you felt like you always wanted to be more confident and you see somebody expressing confidence, you might be really attracted to that at the same time. If you have repressed parts of you that are unwilling to own your full, full self and, and take up space in the world and have boundaries and all these different things. So the mind tries to create a sense of wholeness through identifying with people when it gets into a relationship. It identifies subconsciously with like, oh, this person expresses these traits that I repress and I might do some of the same, vice versa. And we have a wholeness here. And over time, the more that the mind gets used to connecting with somebody in that space, the more it also starts to associate the relationship almost as like a separate organism as part of its identity. And this is why we'll see sometimes when people are leaving really long-term relationships, a marriage, a really long-term partnership, there can be a bit of an identity crisis that takes place because there's been this sort of attachment in that situation. And so not only will you have painful stories ignited and the fear of your needs being taken away when you see something that makes you jealous. But you also have this part of your mind that's likely to sort of be activated. That's like the threat to this is a threat to my identity, to my wholeness, to the things that I've attached to and used to make myself whole at a subconscious level. So I just want you to see like, you know, as you've patterned this in and you've associated this person as your sense of self for, for a long period of time, and you have these three really fundamental things happening all subconsciously, it makes sense that, you know, the anxious preoccupied individual can experience quite, quite strong jealousy to a certain degree. And, and it's not your fault. It's the result of traumatic imprints that happened at a subconscious level. So what do you do with it? Well, I want you to notice first that the places that we are most unconscious or in other words the places that we you know have the biggest coping mechanisms and trauma responses and wounds we're also the less aware we're, we're also the most asleep like we do these things through this filter we, we basically go into a trance when we're triggered by these past experiences and we use these automatic sort of autopiloted or automated unconscious coping mechanisms and usually these create a lot of harm long term they might have been something that served at one point in time so for example, like if you were a child and maybe you had a sibling and there was some jealousy there because maybe you, you know, felt like you were in competition, you guys were close in age, there's competition for attention. And then, you know, maybe when you freaked out and threw a temper tantrum, that might've gotten your parents' attention as a young child, but that's, that might've worked then. And that might've been patterned in as a subconscious coping mechanism and adaptation to, to jealousy then but that's not necessarily going to be a really great strategy in your adult life. But unless we go back and we reprogram these programs, you know, you might end up being the person that throws a temper tantrum at a dinner party or, you know, at a boardroom meeting or these types of things when the attention's on you or whatever it might be. So 
you want to be aware that just because you had these coping mechanisms that worked once doesn't mean they still work. And so you want to really get clear about your entire pattern first. You want to be like, okay, what specifically is triggering me? What painful stories come up? What beliefs are in there inside of me? Um, or what unmet needs am I afraid of? And what this is telling you is that these are things that are still alive in you at the subconscious level. These are still things that are active in you. They're like dormant waiting to be touched and they're going to come out. And what you really want to do from the needs perspective is let's say it's for safety. Okay. I, I feel like when my relationship's threatened, I feel like unsafe as a whole. What this tells you is like, you really need to work on creating more safety in your life. And this can be safety in your sense of self through strengthening your self identity, through having boundaries and, and showing up in, in a more balanced way throughout all seven areas of your life. Um, through repatterning the core belief that I am unsafe to begin with. Needs and beliefs can get really intertwined in this specific case. So maybe you believe I'm not good enough and that scares you as well. So then you have to work on these stories and you have to start changing the story you have about yourself at a subconscious level to see you through a different lens, through a different light, so that you are not using a relationship as a big band-aid to cover these things up, to try to make you feel whole from the outside in. And then at any point in time, if there's a potential threat to the relationship, it just triggers this massive trauma response. So I say to people a lot, like if, if you can get triggered by something, and it's really triggering. And tr let's say we, we identify as a trigger as being something where you have a disproportionate emotional reaction to a specific circumstance. We know what's happening is that you're triggered. And that means that you have subconsciously stored things that are coming to the surface and you're experiencing the pain of this current triggering situation right now, plus all the emotional residue that's flooding to the surface from your subconscious from the past. So if you can get triggered by things still, you still have unresolved traumas stored dormantly from time to time, but also actively when they do get touched. And some of us, you know, are, have less dormant traumas at the subconscious level than others. What this tells you is that you still have trauma to work on. There was still pain that needs to be resolved. There were still experiences that your subconscious mind and nervous system couldn't process. So they reorganize themselves around and have these really strong coping mechanisms. And so until we meet these needs for ourselves that weren't met back then until we change the stories that we believe about ourselves and repeat them and create new stories using repetition plus emotion in order to reprogram the subconscious mind. And until we start empowering the traits within ourselves that might be repressed that we're using at a subconscious level, not like in a manipulative or intentional way, but that we're using to connect through other people to feel a sense of wholeness in our lives until we work those things out, then we are going to keep repeating these patterns here. So, I highly recommend coming up with strategies on those three levels. What story I tell about myself, what traits are repressed within myself, what needs are unmet within myself, and really working to empower those things and repetitively do it so that your subconscious mind learns that, oh, in fact, I do have wholeness here. And you will see as a natural byproduct, byproduct of this, feelings of jealousy start to diminish quite greatly. So there's so much more we can say about this. I've got a ton of content about this, especially in the advanced anxious preoccupied attachment cell course inside of the school, but a tremendous amount to come. Um, and so would love to, you know, help support you guys through there. Or if you have any further questions about this, you can also leave them in the comment section below and um, stay tuned for the rest of the series where I'll talk about the other attachment styles and their natural jealous responses. And thank you so much for watching and being a part of this community. And I will see you in the next video.